Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. We're here for day seven of my challenge here to see if I can hit rank one mythic and standard. Currently doing best of three just in preparation for this weekend um, that I've qualified for for the, uh, the standard qualifier event. So yeah, really happy to kind of keep moving forward here. Um, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing, maybe sharing it with a friend. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much for coming back and supporting me and just really enjoying the content. I really appreciate you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. So thank you so much. Um, I also do want to give a shout out here to my very first member. Um, so Kibo, this is a big shout out to you. Thank you so much. It really does mean the world to me. You are amazing and I appreciate you. So I just want you to know um, that this is a huge way to help support the channel. Um, and if some of the rest of you are considering joining and supporting the channel, this is a great way to do it. Um, you can just uh, go ahead and uh, look at uh, either of the two options. I have a dedicated level and adjust a car level um, kind of with different perks. So one of the main benefits is getting access to the content here early and so i'm going to be seeing if i can be maybe rolling some more stuff out in the future as well but again this is another way to help support the channel thank you guys so much if you would like to become a member and help support my channel you can do so just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the um, also right under the banner here for the video so these are both great ways to support the channel I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you so thank you guys so much again for your consideration all right let's get into some games um, let's go ahead and dive in so no real changes here to the deck since yesterday uh, it's been going pretty well I like the sideboard where it is and yeah it's just feeling great so I think just getting some more reps in here before the weekend is going to be kind of what I'm looking to do. Um, I like where some of the removal we have in the board is at. Uh, I think that Doorkeeper Thrall is going to be good. Um, I really like Invasion. Uh, the Glass Casket has been amazing. Um, Kutzel's Flanker. And then March of Otherworldly uh, Light has just been one of the best cards in the board so far. So let's go ahead and jump into some matches. So I hope everyone's having a great week so far. Super excited here for the big tournament coming up. Um, yeah, and just, uh, it's been so much fun running Mono White Humans. Can't say enough good stuff. All right, opening hand looks great. All right, so up against uh, Boros Convoke. We're gonna go ahead and lead out here with Veteran into Double Word the next turn. Question is, do they have the Gleeful Demolition opening? Okay, looks like they don't. Happy to see that. And yeah, we're just going to be fighting for Warden Control here. We do have our Brutal Cathars coming out, which is going to be great. So hopefully we can use that on their Warden. And Novice Inspector is going to be a nice follow-up, I think. Uh, we do have, yeah, two pieces of removal, so I feel pretty good about this. We've got land coming. Yeah, they're just going to be going big with Warden, so Brutal Cathar is going to be great here. Yeah. 
And I think we want to just keep pushing with one of our wardens here. Yeah, it's going to be a nice pickup. Yeah, no case of the of the uh, Gateway Express is really nice here, so we can hold on to our Brutal Cathar. Now, let's see, if we push out Copper Coat here, we've got 3, 5, 9, 11. Not quite lethal. So maybe we just go Brutal Cathar plus Inspector. That feels pretty good. Kind of slowed us, slows down their chances of just like getting us with um, recruiter next turn. So if they have like recruiter plus like a one drop, yeah, I think we just do this over two turns. Yeah, that's gonna do it. All right, so let's bring in our Lantern Flares. We're going to bring in more Marches. Uh, destroy Evil. Whoops. Probably not Surge. And Doorkeeper Thralls. Glass Casket. Actually, I guess Glass Casket plus Doorkeeper Thrall is kind of a, not a combo here. So Casket is pretty good if we don't have a Doorkeeper Thrall but they're not great together. Um, and I think since we're bringing in so many spells here, we probably just cut Dahlia. And then I think maybe we shave like one Inspector. The Brutal Cathars can be good, um, but they're going to be boarding in Lithomantic Barrage, and I've got to make some more cuts. Although this does deal well with tokens, so... I don't know if we, if we do want to end up actually cutting that. Kind of in the past here, I've just been shaving like one copy of Knight Errant, uh, which can be really good too, but it's not a combo with Doorkeeper Thrall. And maybe like one copy of like Sun Gold Sentinel. So yeah, if we're going the Doorkeeper Thrall route, maybe we just cut the brutal cathars and then i guess we maybe leave in maybe like the sentinel yeah i guess let's try that it could be right to maybe run like the glass casket and the doorkeeper thrall just like if we don't have one like hopefully it's enough but because they're <laughs> kind of a non-bow it's sort of uh it's an interesting choice so the question here is like do we trade Warden for half a card? Because we assume that they have reinforcements here, right? So I think that maybe... Because like if they have like reinforcements and they have another land, they can go into Warden. Or excuse me, they can go into Knight Errant. Um, since we already have a creature here, we can get Adeline going. So maybe we just push and just see if they want to trade. Because like the fewer resources they have, the better. I'm not sure about this attack, but I think trading this for half a card actually is good enough here just to slow them down sufficiently. Like, we just don't want them to explode into Knight Errant this turn. Nimpa call is going to be rough times for sure.
Okay, we definitely need removal stat. Um, we're very close to dead. Yeah, because I guess Anipa Call moves out of range of Yganjo. So. <sighs> guess we just play Warden, hold up Yganjo here. I think we do offer the trade here for Knight Errant. We could also just use the Ganjo now. I mean, that's it's not terrible. Yeah, Knight Errant number two is super rough here, especially if they've got another Warden going. Oh man, this is going to be rough. Yeah, now they can just put their ward into the air and hit us for a bunch. Um, I think we're just a little too far behind here, but I guess let's play it out. Surprised they go for Clue there over just playing two more um, with the reinforcements. So I think we just trade here, try to keep our Adeline going, take the hit in the air. Okay, I mean, Lantern Flare is not bad. So if we attack with Adeline, we can have Functionally, four creatures, still not enough for the Warden. And Warden's just gonna beat us in the air. <sighs> I think we can like maybe like stay alive one more turn depending on what they attack with, and then just try to like draw into hard removal. It's probably our best bet. Otherwise we can like try to like see if we can smoke them out by attacking with Adeline and seeing what they do. That might be the play. Yeah, 
now. They're not they're not foolish enough to fall for it. Um, okay, so I think we just take it and sit. That works too. Yeah, and now even if we block three creatures, we're still taking massive amounts. So yeah, like on the one hand, like Doorkeeper Thrall, it is great against um, like Imanian's Recruiter, a lot of their stuff it feels really good. It does shut off some of our other answers though, but I think yeah, maybe this is still good enough. I kind of want to like also maybe play either like the Brutal Cathars or like the Casket just in case like we don't draw the Doorkeeper Thrall because we do have only two copies. Even though it is kind of a non-bow, but it's like if we have one, maybe it's enough to just get there. Because like the Lantern Flare wasn't big enough to deal with a threat. Like we have Destroy Evil and like four marches. And like Sun Cold Sentinel is good, but it's not amazing. It's not like game breaking. I almost feel like we just want to go way more into just like hard removing everything we can. Kind of just want like Inspector even more just to have like the one drops covered. And I guess like Knight Errant also is really good. Like if we don't have our Doorkeeper Thrall. It's not as good, but I guess we'll try it like this. I think we throw back, what do we throw back here? Like, I think we want to keep the Brutal Cathar. It's either that or, I, it's, I guess it's between that or Knight Errant. Like, I think we want everything else. We have like a good like one, two, three. Maybe Knight Errant is just better since we're on the play. Yeah, I mean, I guess they've got some removal too. I think I'm gonna throw back the Brutal Cathar here. I don't know if it's right, but since we're on the play, I feel like we can get away with a little bit more. Now let's see if we can finesse some damage. Nope, <laughs> that's okay. I think we just want to go Adeline here to start pushing damage. Like we could go Knight Errant. I think Adeline is just a little bit better.
So maybe they're considering like to go like Knight Errant or not here, because they are opening themselves up for quite a bit of damage. So yeah, I think just Copper Coat into pushing for quite a bit here feels good. And then if we can try to Knight Errant also, so I guess we just like, if we push with these two, we'll still have enough if we like leave these other ones back. We are missing some damage here, but this way we get to also go for Knight Errant. So I think that's a good, it's a good trade off. Well, I suppose like we were representing lethal that way, so they would have been forced to block. Yeah, maybe it was right to just push with everything there. They'd have to like at least trade with like the adversary. This is still pretty good though. I think we just want, we've got a bunch of life. Maybe just Warden plus Copper Coat. Yeah, like as weird as it sounds, I feel like keeping in like even some of like the non-bow stuff with the doorkeeper thrall sort of makes sense because it's like if you don't see doorkeeper thrall, you kind of need the more explosive stuff. And I think that um, Sun Gold Sentinel is just like kind of medium in this match, but certainly like nothing, nothing amazing. So they're like representing Iganjo here. This is a very weird attack. Unless they have like, what could they have? I kind of almost want to take it here, just so like there's like no no nonsense, because we're at twenty seven. Like if they spend their turn like going Iganjo, that's also pretty good for us though. Yeah, I just don't know what they could have. I guess let's see what they've got. Yeah, nothing. Okay, that works. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think about that that kind of sideboard plan because I'm, I'm very unsure about sort of how to run it versus boros there i think there's there's just like so many like must kill targets that having in the extra removal you know and possibly setting up some potential non-bows with the doorkeeper thrall is still worth it I haven't seen the uh, the Teamer World Soul deck here in quite a while, so who knows? Maybe we'll get another match with them. All right, opening hand looks great. Okay, looks like we're up against, I guess, possibly... Possibly Golgari, or maybe this is Jund or something else. Yeah, okay, maybe Jund. I 
think here we just kind of lead out with Thalia, sort of slow things down a little bit. Creature is really good. Do we just try to erase Preacher here, or do we try to remove it? Um, I feel like Veteran isn't super amazing here. Like, we can go Warden plus March, removing Veteran, and deal with Preacher. I kind of like that. It still lets us get something on the board and helps kind of... Um, oh, you know what? Actually, let's see. Yeah, we have enough to do all that, I think, right? See, hang on, let's tap tap some mana so that we don't get the mana all screwed up. Whoops, did I just oh man. <laughs> Ran out of time here. Okay. Uh, no attacks. I think we, oh man, we, we tapped the Mistress Foundry. That was super awkward. All right, do we still have enough to do this? Okay, I guess, the, ah, God, we just ran out of time. Super awkward. And then the game bugged out with Veteran out here. You know what, I think it's because the extra cost from Thalia, I forgot that it was, we were getting taxed ourselves on the extra cost there. Let's pick up uh, Night Errant here, see if we can try to recover this game. Definitely a blunder there, but. So I think we want another Copper Coat. Brutal Cathar is not great. It's, I guess we have the Copper Coats to kind of to protect it a little bit, so. We could also just get like another Veteran, get some more life going. Yeah, I guess we can go Copper Coat plus Brutal Cathar. I think this is the problem with like talking through all of my plays. Sometimes it just like slows it down too much that we ran out of time. So I can pick it up a little bit. And I think we could probably use another veteran. That seems pretty good. I guess we can only march for one right now because of Thalia. So let's just, um, I think we just sit here, just try to block his um, sentinel.
Okay, Shieldred is a thing. But at least we have these marches. So marches and the copper coats are going to help. And then I think just like buying the extra life here feels good. And we just want to get to a point where we can start flying over. Okay, so how do we want to do this? I guess if we march, we can march, get rid of Shieldred. And then try to get Warden closer to being in the air. I mean, that feels pretty good. Otherwise, we just like double copper coat. I think March is good enough here that we just do that now. And then we just set. Yeah, they want to just start drawing extra cards. I totally get that. Still a little bit short on mana on just straight removing Glissa with March. I guess we could remove another Copper Coat to get rid of Glissa and then start like pushing in the air. Cause the problem is like Glissa can just remove three counters from Warden, which is super annoying. Could also just like double Copper Coat. That's pretty good too. Yeah, I think double Copper Coat is still just, it's just good to get this out here. Don't need another Thalia, and then... And I think we just want to leave everything up here, just in case they have like extra removal handy. Okay, so now we can straight up remove Glissa, but I think we just try to take this Warden to victory. They might have removal in hand. Let's get Copper Coat down. Just to really tax them if they want to have like removal on Warden. Because right now they got to pay an extra three just to target it. Um, and then I don't think we really care about March right now, so let's just get Adeline going. I guess the planes is actually okay. I mean, it, if we have the planes here, we can just activate both Mishra's foundries to attack next turn, but 
Can probably do a little better also. I guess they would need like long goodbye here maybe. Which is certainly a card they could board in. It's possible, or even main deck. Um, so they could have long goodbye. Other than that, though, I don't think they could have really anything because we've got like Thalia plus three copper coats. So they need to pay an extra four to even target. Yeah, if they go for the throat full on and tap out, I guess they can target. Okay, so we have... Um, I guess with Foundry, we can march one of their creatures. Like, we march the, the Lifelinker, and then they have five blockers. We've got more than enough to get this done. Yeah, that'll work. I guess we could also, like, Glissa makes things a little bit smaller, but we only need to hit for just a tiny amount for this to work, so should be good. That'll do it. Well, I'm really glad we were able to like win back that game even after kind of that sort of major like timeout blunder in the beginning. So, okay, against Golgari, um, what do we want to bring in? Or technically Jund, I suppose. Um, I think Invasion is good here. Since they've got like Shieldred, that kind of stuff. Um, March is good against their land. Peacekeeper is also nice. Um, they do run, probably run board wipes. So actually, I guess Flanker would be good as well. I think Brutal Cathar is probably not as good. And then destroy evil would be good here as well so is surge so all the removal is going to be black i guess black or red really um do we want lantern flare it's a little bit more conditional than our other removal so it's not quite as good i think let's see we can probably cut maybe some veterans although they do they can put out some good damage so what is weaker here i guess like sentinels not quite as strong we can probably shave a couple sentinels i like our top end we still have a lot of stuff to cut here so i think maybe we like thalia's 
pretty good, but we are bringing in, in a ton of removal ourselves. So maybe shave like a couple Thalias. Um, shave an Inspector, maybe an Initiate. And what else? Maybe like a knight errant and maybe one more inspector just to get down. Yeah, I'm not sure about that board. Um, okay, opening hand looks good. I guess the question is like how many Lunark veterans do we need? Because like they have like ways of draining us out with like Shieldred. So having some life gain is good but they're not like super beat down either. I think we just go for adversary here. And then, like, just try to get Night Errant going. We could, I suppose, we could just like march. Um, like use a march and then also play inspector. I kind of like going for a knight errant here too though. Like they get a little bit of a value out of it. Um, but I think it's better to get knight errant going. So let's do that. This is a little bit more explosive. Yeah, now we can pick up, probably wanna get Peacekeeper, cause that way if they have like deadly cover up, we can slow that down. Otherwise I suppose we could do like Flanker, if they're gonna do like a big board wipe. Or we could just go for like double Adeline. I mean, cause Adeline is definitely like a huge problem. Since we've got the marches, I think Adeline yeah, this is this is interesting. Flanker is decent as well. Yeah, I guess like Flanker plus Adeline is probably like the most Hmm. Although like Peacekeeper is good too. I think I'm just going to go Flanker and Adeline. Not entirely sure. Just to give me like more options that I can like hold up Flanker in case they've got like board wipe nonsense. Part of me definitely wanted to like pick up two copies of Adeline because it's such a house. All right, they had the Path of Peril, unfortunately. I don't think we trade for Preacher here. I think we just play Adeline next turn and keep pushing. Since we've got the marches especially. Yeah, again, not interested in trading for Preacher.
So now I think we just hold up March for their for their turn and then just push a little bit more here. I guess we can we can get veteran going in the air. But then we'd have to like pitch a card for March, and I don't not a huge fan of that. So I think we just just push. Okay, so now we can march their sentinel and also play veteran. And that way we try to keep Adeline out of cut down range as much as possible. Well, that was unfortunate we didn't have time to have mana for flanker to keep that up so i guess we just sun gold sentinel here um leave flanker up Um, yeah, I think making this a little bit bigger. Is it better to just like gain life and scry to scrying's decent? I think that the extra counters not bad. We've got the um Iganjo here. And they picked up Soren off the top. Let's see if we can draw into something else here. Hopefully they won't be able to draw their way out of this, but <laughs> it's looking a little rough. <clears throat> Just with all the work that it takes to kill Soren and then having them be able to replay it with their attack Anuma. Okay, so now I guess we can... Actually, this is good. We can play Lunark Veteran here, send Sun Gold Sentinel through to kill Soren, and then push with Foundry on face. I guess, are we willing to trade? Yeah, 
that'll take a bunch of mana. Um, we could also just like activate Foundry and full send on face, and then use Iganjo. I mean, that's not bad. They'll be able to make. I guess they can sack Soren to get like a vampire, and then get Soren back and replay it. How do we want to do this? I think maybe it's better to just like focus on face here. It's close. We could have played the veteran to have this be <clears throat> um, use Coven here, but I think we're gonna use Iganjo either way, so. <clears throat> the other consideration is we could hold Iganjo for their, um, their vampire, like the lifelike vampire, because that will kind of slow things down. So maybe we just let this trade happen. Yeah, I think actually we just let this trade happen. Not sure if that was the right way to play this, but I felt like pushing face was decent there. Okay, so now copper coat. Let's see, actually if we play copper coat, yeah, then this, this I think we can, so the trick here is if we play copper coat first, we won't be able to use the sun gold ability. But if we first activate foundry and then sentinel and then play copper coat, I think it works. Yeah, so now we activate Sentinel. And then we play Copper Coat to give it the buff to make it unblockable for four. So I guess if they have like cut down or go for the throat, we still lose here. Um, yeah, but that'll do it. Got there. Diamond tier one. All right. Okay, and then I've got to make some space for some more recording here, so i got to end the video here. But thank you guys so much for watching today, and let's take a look at the stats. All right, so we are, we just hit Diamond 1, 27 and 10 in matches, so 73% win rate, 72% on the play, 61% on the draw. Really happy with how it's going right now. I feel like I'm, I'm sort of feeling my way through the sideboard, and it's making sense. Um, this session here did have a couple uh, misplays here, one where we timed out, which was almost very punishing, but we were able to kind of win it back. So we are able to kind of turn that around, which was great. But anyways, um, you know, it's, I'd rather like explain like my thought processes and plays to you guys and then potentially like risk 
playing a little bit slower than just kind of go through it and not talk about it. So anyways, I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. And we'll see you in the next one.